Hi guys and welcome to Fix Savers. Today's video we're continuing our series on our pool table videos and we're looking at how to recloth your pool table rails. Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to replace this green napped cloth into a blue worsted cloth. Let's take a look. So one important thing to note is there are a couple of different types of uh, rail corners. Uh, this end here you can see we've got quite an extreme angle, almost like a 45 degree angle. That's one of your uh, corner pockets. Uh, but on the other end, if I just uh, flip this over quickly for you, uh, you can see this is one of the side pockets and you have a, a much smaller angle on your side pockets. Okay, so before you uh, begin, you want to make sure you've got a clean work surface. We put a blanket down here to uh, help protect the, uh, the nice finished wood. Uh, you don't want to damage anything. Make sure it's clear, free of staples, and you're good to go. And so we're going to start with the rail from the head of the table. If we flip it over here with the, uh, with the rubber uh, facing towards you, uh, you'll see that there's a, a series of staples that are holding it on from the underside. So you want to grab yourself a uh, staple remover and just carefully work under the edges of these uh, staples uh, just nice and slowly uh, do it safely just so you can just get it uh, enough so you can get some pliers uh, on it and we'll pull it out with some pliers in a second you don't need to completely remove it so just get under the edge and start to lift up uh, these staples and uh, obviously all of these have got to removed, uh, be removed so just work your way across from one end to the other. So also note there'll be some staples here on the uh, end of the rail and obviously these need to uh, be removed as well. Now just grab yourself some pliers and just pull all of the staples out by pulling directly upwards. So with our staples all removed uh, we can just uh, go ahead and fold the uh, cloth down uh, out of the way. And uh, one thing to uh, point out is just across the, uh, the front edge here, the edge nearest to you on the wood here, uh, it's actually got this slightly indented uh, section that sits a little bit lower and that's designed uh, as the kind of strip in which you place your staples. As you can see you want to get the staples pretty much bang in the, uh, in the center of that. Uh, but as you can see they're slightly indented so it, it sits a little bit lower and that gives you a little bit of space for that staple to uh, sit. Uh, if, it, if it was sit, sat on this section uh, it would touch the uh, bottom of the uh, slate whereas if it's under this section the head won't actually touch the slate at all so that's why this little uh, this little indented groove uh, exists so that's where you want to fire your staples as close to the center of that as possible. So next we'll just uh, flip this over and uh, we'll have a look at it, this from the other side. So fold back the cloth and uh, what I want to show you here is the uh, the feather strip. So the feather strip is this uh, little um, kind of section of wood uh, just here and the way that it works is the cloth is actually folded around this strip and then the strip is pressed uh, into the a groove that's on the rail and that's what holds the, uh, the cloth in place. Okay so for the removal of the uh, feather strip what you want to try and do is lift it up from the end. It can be a little bit tricky. Uh, you can pull on the cloth and uh, lift it. Uh, this one's, uh, yes, it, it's moving, uh, but it is in there quite uh, tight. So to help me uh, get it started, uh, just grab a, a flathead screwdriver, just carefully place that in from the end, and uh, we use that as a lever just to help uh, get this uh, get this started. Yeah, you can see it's starting to come now. So uh, as it comes, if you just pull uh, with one hand, start to uh, pull the uh, cloth uh, upward. And then uh, with the other hand, you can um, lift the, uh, the feather strip itself. And just work your way slowly along from one end to the other. Be careful not to place too much pressure uh, on the feather strip because it is only made of wood. Uh, and if you um, pull it too hard, it can snap. And if you are pulling it, don't pull it right from the end because that's going to create a big lever between two points. What you want to do when you're pulling it, don't pull it from the end. Actually try and get your fingers as close to where you're trying to pull from as possible to make that lever as short as possible. Much less likely to accidentally uh, break the uh, feather strip. So just keep that going from one end all the way along to the other. And here we are just getting towards the, uh, the end of the rail. Yeah, so, and there we go. So that is the uh, feather strip removed. So if we take a quick look at the, uh, the feather strip here, uh, when you drop it into the slot, uh, you'll notice that there's quite a lot of spare room around it. It kind of um, 
uh, rattles around in there. You can see that there's space on either side of it. That's good. You're going to wrap around the, the cloth's actually going to wrap around it and take up that space. And so when you jam this in, uh, that's actually what's going to hold it in place. And it's a good idea now before you continue, you tend to get a lot of kind of um, dirt and dust builds up over the years. It's a good idea just to give these a bit of a clean out. So I'm just going to give these a quick blow uh, just to get any dirt uh, out of the groove. So now grab your uh, rail cloth and you need to know uh, which is the playing surface and which is the reverse. Uh, manufacturers uh, will very often put a little uh, sticker on one side uh, that shows you where the uh, playing surface is. However, it's quite easy to uh, to tell the difference. You can kind of you know, physically look at it. One size, uh, one side looks uh, finished. The other side looks uh, a little bit rough and, and generally a little bit furry on a on a worsted cloth like this. So it's usually quite easy to tell the difference between the two. Now, what we're going to do is we need to um, actually lay this with the uh, playing uh, playing face of the cloth will be facing downward. What you want to do is lay it down with approximately uh, the same amount of uh, overlap at each end and you just want to at this stage just get it roughly aligned uh, with the uh, little cutout for your feather strip. So now take your uh, feather strip, uh, ensure that you've got the, um, the uh, correct end, they've got these uh, angles on them, ensure that the angles kind of line up and just start to press your, uh, your cloth down. You don't want too much uh, cloth, too, too much excess and if you get it fairly accurate you can get it so you don't have to cut much off or sometimes anything uh, at the end just go down start to feed it into the groove and at this stage we're just pressing it uh, lightly into the groove just to make sure all the material is in the right place and the ends are lining up uh, as we want them to so we'll just go along and push that in gently by hand and uh, the next thing you want to do is grab yourself a little block of wood and what you're going to be doing is using the very corner of that wood uh, to help press it in. So we're going to give it a little tap using the corner of the wood uh, and we're going to do it one kind of half of uh, you know, whatever the width of your wood in uh, is. We're doing it by about half of each time to give it a nice firm tap in. Not ridiculously hard, just a nice firm tap just to help get that uh, feather strip sunk down nice and low so we've got a nice uh, solid lock on the uh, cloth. And what you can do is you can kind of feel uh, along the uh, feather strip to see how indented it is. You want to get it so it's kind of even uh, all the way all the way along. So if you can feel any areas uh, as you go along where it's a, a little bit higher, uh, obviously you can go back to that area and uh, just give that area an, an extra tap, uh, just get it a little bit lower. So you want to do that from uh, one end right the way across to the other end and run your finger over it, make sure it feels level and feels good. And um, then we can move on. So next you'll find you've got a little bit of a cloth kind of overhanging the gap here and this needs to be a trim back to get a nice tidy finish. Uh, now what you'll find is these um, uh, these worsted cloths, uh, they tend to uh, be uh, kind of fray uh, quite a bit. The napped cloths don't tend to fray quite as much as uh, these worsted ones. So these worsted ones can be uh, a little bit uh, tricky to, uh, to trim back. Uh, but when you come to, uh, to trim this back, what you want to be doing is uh, making sure that when you uh, when you're in there with your knife, that you're cutting almost straight downwards. Uh, so you're just cutting along. You don't want to cut uh, inwards because if you were to accidentally slip, you'd be uh, cutting through your cloth and, of course, damaging the uh, top of your rail. So you definitely don't want to be cutting in that direction. Uh, likewise, if you slip in the uh, opposite direction, then you could uh, also uh, damage the um, rubber uh, as the knife uh, goes across and you don't want to do that. So what you want to do is keep your knife fairly upright and just uh, with nice control just gently go along and just start to trim that. So once you've uh, finished your trimming you'll no doubt have lots of uh, little bits of uh, cotton threads and offcuts. I'm going to get rid of all of those so I'm just going to give it a bit of a, a wipe off and I'll give it a quick blow uh, just down into the, uh, the bin uh, just to get rid of all those bits of threads and all those bits of uh, cotton. And now's your uh, final opportunity, you just want to go over and uh, give it a quick check over and uh, make sure you're happy that there's no uh, bits of thread or um, bits of dirt, bits of uh, wood or anything uh, on the cloth. You want to make sure everything's nice and clean so when this folds over you've got, uh, you don't have any little uh, bits uh, underneath, any lumps or bumps. So now's your opportunity to spend a little bit of time making sure that you're happy. So next we've got to make a, a small uh, cut uh, to the um, ends of the uh, cloth here because we're going to be doing a fold at the end of the process. 
and uh, right here where the feather strip is you can see that kind of ends at four, almost a 45 degree angle and what we want to do is uh, we're going to cut that almost matches that uh, so it's like a, like the top of a, an equilateral triangle so you're matching the angle that comes up uh, so what I'm going to do is you can, can do it with a knife um, but it's a little bit trickier to get that cut especially down in there since it's very tight uh, I find it's a little bit easier to use um, good fabric scissors and all you want to do is get in there and like I said match the angle on the opposite side and just get it in it's, just do it nice and carefully get it in as tight as you can and then once you're in there you're just going to nip off the uh, the excess uh, material so, so basically you're cutting out a, a very small triangle uh, out of the cloth okay so with our little uh, corners cut out we're just going to give it a final uh, check over and then when we're ready what we can do is just go ahead and uh, gently turn this uh, cloth over so you now should have the playing side up so i'm just going to lift this off of the uh, desk for a second uh, any little bits of wood uh, anything uh, any dirt or bits before you flip it over just get rid of those turn them over uh, again with the uh, rail uh, facing to the uh, rubber uh, rubber of the rail facing towards you okay so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, pull this uh, material up and we are um, uh, going to get a staple uh, in the middle uh, just to, to hold the uh, material in place when you pull it up uh, you want to pull it up fairly firmly and get that staple in uh, what you don't want to do is you don't want to pull it up ridiculously hard uh, you know you're not trying to stretch the cloth like you're putting it on a, on the table it doesn't need to be that tight uh, but it does need to be um, fairly firm and you don't want to make it too tight because it can actually uh, deaden the action of the um, of the rubber make you feel like you've got dead spots in the rubber so you want to pull it up fairly firmly uh, but not ridiculously tightly and then we're going to get a staple bang in the middle so when you're ready uh, grab your staple gun uh, pull it up uh, from the center you're going to put a staple bang in the middle of the uh, indented uh, section across the front there so next, looking at one of the ends, you've got the, uh, the rubber uh, section on the end here. What you want to do is fold the cloth over. And when you do this, you're looking to uh, pull it uh, directly straight in relation to the corner, not to, the, not to either side, but straight up on 90 degrees parallel to kind of that corner there. You pull it straight up. And what you're looking to do is get a staple in right at the top. Now I remember uh, we have under here this little uh, indented section which is uh, specifically where we want to try and hit the staple so we want to try and get in right at the top as close as we can to the top of that section so we're going to pull it stretch it up fairly tight similar sort of uh, tightness again one staple right at the top in there so with our first staple uh, in place uh, we can look at uh, making a series of staples down this uh, edge now when you come to uh, do, running the staples down here, you want to run them all uh, in the same direction as, as this one. So you're shooting them all in this way. Uh, what you don't want to do is uh, kind of be tempted to turn the, um, uh, the stapler around and start stapling that way. All the staples should run in exactly the same direction all the way across the rail. Okay, so as we work our way down the material, what we're looking to do is actually pull it up and across. We're actually trying to uh, generate these little uh, creases in it and then we're going to try and trap these creases uh, using a staple and so each time we're going to add a, a, a crease then a staple then another crease then a staple working our way uh, back round to the corner so a spare set of hands can come in uh, very handy uh, especially on these uh, worsted cloths uh, they're quite hard to work with so I'm going to get my partner to come in here she's uh, more dexterous with this than, than I am so what you want to do is create a, a small crease and uh, then place a staple uh, across that crease so you kind of lock that crease uh, into place and then you just want to keep repeating this uh, process working uh, your way down uh, to the corner what you're actually trying to do uh, whilst you're doing this uh, process here is you're actually trying to remove the uh, the excess material uh, that's going to be um, uh, that, that kind of exists around that corner so you're getting it tighter and tighter with each one of these folds, you're getting it tighter and tighter as you work back towards the corner of the rail. So you should come to the point where when you get to the corner where you've gathered enough material that you can just pull it straight up and start to staple it as normal. So you can see the corner is complete and so you can just continue along now and staple the remainder uh, back in towards the center you see you've got no ripples on the uh, surface all the ripples are kind of hidden up behind your uh, staples that's what you're uh, you're aiming for you're aiming to gather up that material and lock it into place uh, behind the staples and that will leave you a nice uh, smooth uh, surface along the uh, face of the rail and once you've come around the corner as long as you've gathered enough material 
you can just literally pull it straight and then just carry on uh, stapling back towards your, uh, your center staple. So just grab your uh, staple gun and uh, be careful not to uh, get any um, ripples on the face here. You should be able to kind of uh, pull it and direct it. And you want to do your uh, staples uh, kind of uh, about an inch and a half apart, uh, something like that. And when you're pulling this cloth, don't pull it directly upward. You see I'm kind of pulling it um, slightly behind where I'm stapling and I'm actually pulling it diagonally backwards rather than straight up because this is a worsted cloth that can be a little, uh, a little bit uh, unforgiving. Again, trying not to pull too hard uh, as you do this process. And then just repeat the exact same process on the opposite end of the rail. So there we have it. You should now have a nice uh, smooth surface to the rails. If you have got like a, a little a ripple uh, somewhere in the plane surface, you can reach between those two staples and just pull up and you should be able to kind of uh, pull out the um, uh, pull out the crease and then get an extra staple in between those two. So if you do have a crease, just literally pull it up and put a staple in between the two and that should get rid of it. So now we can go ahead and uh, just flip the rail over and uh, just uh, have a little double check of your uh, feather strip and make sure it's sitting in and it feels level uh, across the uh, edge there. It doesn't matter kind of how much it's indented, it's more that it's uh, even uh, across the uh, entire surface. Have a, a little uh, feel across the, uh, the surface and make sure you're happy with the uh, depth of that feather strip. If you do find any high spots, uh, what you can do is you can just grab a piece of your old rail cloth and grab your little wooden block, uh, wrap it in the old cloth just for protection and then uh, very carefully just go down using the corner of the block and just place it uh, on any little high spots that you have there again working at an angle remember you're only trying to hit the, uh, the actual uh, feather strip itself just give it a bit of a tap and then another feel and just uh, keep doing that until you're happy with the, uh, with the depth and the uh, level and the way that it feels so next we want to have a look at finishing the ends of the rails uh, remember, of course, you've got a big hole uh, in the middle of the end here, uh, which is where your uh, pockets uh, lugs are going to fit into. Uh, so we want to avoid that when we're uh, stapling. This is where we made that little cutout earlier, that little triangular cutout. And what that allows us to do now, it allows us to uh, fold that section uh, under. Just give us a nice uh, tidy finish. We're just going to fold that section uh, underneath. And then once that's folded, just going to pull the whole thing up. Then we're going to get a couple of staples in just below the hole on the end here. So just place a couple of staples uh, in on the end there, avoiding the hole, uh, just like that. And then uh, what we want to do is obviously we're going to flip the, uh, the whole thing over and repeat the, uh, the exact same process uh, on the opposite side. So you're going to fold that down out of the way so it's nice and neat and tidy. Pull that up and again we're trying to get a couple of staples uh, in. Uh, whilst making sure that you uh, avoid the, uh, the hole there. So we'll pull it fairly tight and two staples below the hole. So now we need to have a look at uh, trimming off the, uh, the excess uh, fabric. Now remember you've got that kind of indented uh, groove for the staples to fit in. You also ideally want your uh, fabric to uh, fit in that groove as well. So you've got to uh, cut it off fairly uh, tight behind the staples uh, otherwise that material is going to be sat between your um, your rail and your uh, um, slate so really you want to get it um, cut back nice and tight behind those staples so it all sits nice and tidy uh, in the groove now you can do it with a, a knife uh, you have to be a little bit careful this um, this worsted cloth uh, doesn't cut very well with a knife it tends to uh, fray quite easily if it's napped it will cut quite easily I prefer to use uh, scissors uh, whilst doing this, especially on this type of cloth. So just take your time, and remember you need to get fairly uh, close into your, uh, uh, your staples and just work your way all the way along the cloth uh, from one side to the other. I uh, tend to do the, uh, the ends uh, right at the end, so I tend to kind of cut in around the centre and then I'll go uh, backwards and forwards from that point and then finish uh, with the ends because they're a little bit more tricky. So when it comes to your uh, corners, uh, again, you want to get it nice and tight, uh, getting rid of this gathered material. Remember, you've got your little groove uh, behind, and again, you want that material to ideally sit in behind that groove. So again, nice and tight in behind the uh, staples. Uh, it's a little bit harder to uh, cut, because obviously we have the gathered uh, material here. Uh, just follow that up along, making sure you're uh, getting it all inside the little indented section on the front. Just take that off across to the corner. 
And on the very end, uh, you literally want to uh, snip it off just above the uh, staples there. And you want to ensure that the, uh, that the hole for your, uh, for your pockets uh, remains unobstructed. And with it cut back, I can see that I've got just enough space in the end here uh, to get an extra staple in. Uh, so I'm just going to do that very quickly, uh, just to help give it a bit of extra uh, security. So that's the uh, process to finished on this half of the rail. I'm happy with that. So next what we're going to do is just carry the uh, process on to exactly the same uh, on the opposite end. Okay, so now moving on to one of the side rails. The end rails obviously have the, uh, the two corner pockets. The side rails have a combination of a corner pocket and a side pocket. So that's what we need to look at first. So we've repeated the process exactly the same. We started by putting one staple in the center and then we worked uh, the corner exactly the same as uh, we just showed you. This is a standard, uh, this is a corner pocket right here. And then what we're going to do now is going to work back to what is the center pocket. Now it's a, little, it's a little bit easier, the first process anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, start pulling up my material, popping the staples, dot them all the way along until I get a staple nice and close to the edge right here. So I'm going to staple that whole run uh, and then we'll move on to the next stage. And just a quick note, what we've done here is we've done exactly the same cut, a little triangle uh, shaped cut. I've done exactly the same in here. Again, matching the uh, the angle. So uh, it's a much shallower angle this time. You see we've uh, matched the angle, so we've got exactly the same little cut out in the corner, exactly the same as we did on the um, corner pockets. So for your side pocket, we've actually got a different type of fold uh, that we're going to do. And the other thing you can do with your uh, excess uh, material just here, you want to keep some of this, uh, depending on how much you've got. So we're going to add a couple of staples, making sure that we're in the uh, this little kind of designated uh, staple zone. So I'm just going to put an extra couple of staples just in here uh, before I uh, start to trim out a little bit just here. I'm just going to trim a little bit out of here just for now, just so we haven't got too much of a build up of the uh, material. Too many layers. So the key to this fold is uh, making sure you uh, focus on the uh, corner here because that's going to give you a nice clean straight fold. So everything focuses on this little tip right here. So what we're looking to do is to push this material in, get in nice and tight to the corner here. And we're looking to bring this up nice and tight. And what we're looking for is a nice tight fold that follows as close to that line as possible. You can see I'm just off of it, so I'm actually going to refold that, see if I can get it a little bit closer. But that's what we want, and that's why I said it's so important to uh, focus on this little corner here. So I'm going to re-attempt that, hopefully get that tiny bit better. And another thing to point out as well is you can kind of control the direction of this a little bit by kind of changing your, uh, your angle. You want to kind of pull it up so you put it nice and straight and I'm going to put a couple of staples uh, just in the top here. Good measure, I like to put an extra one in that bridges this gap uh, between the two. Keep that down nice and tight. So next looking on the end, uh, this is the bit where we uh, cut the little cut out. So actually want to fold that uh, underneath. Pull that down straight and get a couple of staples in just below your hole. And then if you've still got space in your little uh, staple area just here, you can put an extra one. Again, try and pull, pull it uh, tight up into this corner and put an extra one just in there. So 
So now we can uh, trim it back. So just go just above your staples. Again, you can do this with a knife or with good quality fabric scissors. And make sure that nothing is uh, blocking the, uh, the hole there. Just above your staples, back to the corner. And then you can just go ahead and you can follow follow this down and trim that off. And then obviously when you get to the uh, the other end, it's going to be exactly the same uh, trimming as you did on the standard corner pockets. A tip for you when you're removing these feather strips: if you get to a point where it's getting really hard to get out. Another thing you can do is just grab like um, just this is a kebab skewer, quite a chunky one. Pop it in the channel. Uh, this is if you don't care too much about the condition of the cloth that's coming off, of course. Pop it in the channel, and then you can use your uh, rubber mallet just to gently tap it along. This is going obviously underneath the feather strip. This should help help you get past any kind of stubborn areas as you go along. This one's a particularly stubborn one. That's a nice little tip and obviously you can just keep working that further and further down uh, as you go. But that's just a standard uh, chunky kebab skewer. Another quick tip for you once you remove your feathered strip, if you get one that's got kind of lots of little um, uh, little bits of kind of splintery flaky wood. Another thing you can do is tie that up a little bit. Let's get some very fine uh, sandpaper. And this will just help you get rid of some of the, uh, the worst of them. You don't need to do it very much. What I'm trying to do is get rid of some of these little uh, sharp edges. You see I've had some problems here in the past. This will just chip off any little sharp edges and help stop you getting splinters. And will also help ensure that when you uh, fold your cloth back over, got a nice smooth surface again. There's nothing worse than having a bit of wood that's folded over or whatever because when you pop your, uh, your cloth back over it you'll actually have a lump there. So worth, uh, worth double checking. If you are doing the uh, sanding you notice what I'm doing is I'm actually putting it inside the uh, rail there because I don't want to be sanding any of my nice uh, finished rail here. So I'm actually putting it in the groove so I can't accidentally rub it across the, uh, the top of my finished side. Okay, so we're just going to give you a quick tip. Uh, if you do get um, uh, an area that's loose when you do your uh, cloth pull test and you're finding that you, you're slipping a bit of cloth, mark that part, um, on, obviously not on the uh, not on your actual face, on the bit that you're not going to see, just put a little mark there. Try and work out from where it starts and where it ends. So you've got uh, somewhere to aim for. Now you've got a couple of different options when it comes to um, fixing this issue. So let's uh, look at them both separately. So regardless of which of the two you're going to do, you're going to need to pull it back out, uh, readjust your uh, cloth again, and then push it back in. Now your first option uh, is to get your staple gun and put a long staple, you probably want a half inch staple, uh, into or maybe two or three staples into the section uh, that's loose. So that's your first option. Uh, I'm not too keen on that because it makes it really uh, tricky to, uh, to get back out and it does weaken it, it's only a thin piece of wood. Uh, but that is one option. Uh, but let's have a look at a second option. So your second option is to basically pack the, uh, the gap out to make the gap wider using a little bit of off-cut material. Now you kind of got to gauge um, how loose it is. Uh, you know, if, if you pulled it and it only just came out, uh, you can probably get away with just packing on the one side. Uh, if it, you know, was fairly loose and it's slipping out quite easily, you're probably going to have to pack it on all three sides. Uh, so let's have a little, uh, let's have a little look at how we do this. So grab a little um, scrap of material. Now, if you're only wanting to back the um, only wanting to pad out the one side, you can uh, cut it to approximately the. Uh, the width of the feather strip, like so. Then when you lift your uh, feather strip up, you, you can lay it where you know it's going to be sucked in. And as you push that down, 
like so that will uh, give extra um, packing to this side it make it extra tight on this side now so you can tap that in with your uh, with your mallet and hopefully that uh, one bit of extra material will be enough to get that nice and tight in there and again once it's all done tap it down in there give it another pull test and hopefully you should find that it doesn't come out if however it does continue to come out or you know that you've got a particularly loose uh, one what we have to do is we have to cut a thicker strip and uh, we're going to do it on all three sides so this time we're going to do it thicker we want it to cover all three sides and one very important thing when you're uh, doing this so it's exactly the same principle you're basically just jamming the uh, the, the slot uh, with um, more material one very important thing to bear in mind when you do this is what you're going to be folding it over it's going to be folded over in this direction so what you don't want to end up with is cloth sticking out on this side when you fold it over you could have a little lump under there so you've kind of got to position this so that it will come up the side when you when you put it into the slot it will come up the side but it won't protrude from the top kind of like that there and then obviously you'd hammer that in. This side doesn't matter so, so much, obviously you, you can trim this up as you need to, but this side is not going to be trimmed. So as you push that all the way down, uh, hopefully that will all disappear. So that's very important. Don't be put, kind of putting it in the middle uh, because then you're going to end up with something here that you can't trim off. So you want to get it kind of like that. So there's just enough and it will stretch a little bit just enough to go up the uh, the other side like that give that a tap in so if you do have any material that's that's loose those are your two options and your two best ways to uh, resolve it but you want to get that resolved if you do find any loose bits before you move on because now's the time to fix it. it's easy to fix it now relatively trying to fix it later could be nearly impossible so do double check for those loose spots and do fix them if you do find them so when you're uh, lifting your feather strips out <coughs> You may get one that uh, breaks. You can see we've, uh, this one actually snapped. Uh, it's unfortunate, it does happen uh, from time to time. Uh, what we've done to uh, repair this one, we've just put a little bit of a uh, five minute epoxy uh, in there. And then we actually clamped it. Um, put together a clamp, put some masking tape just on the faces. So they don't want the epoxy on the face of that. And just clamp that closed and obviously just left that for 10-15 uh, minutes until it's set uh, that's the best thing to do and um, when you put the epoxy in you want to make sure that there aren't any lumps on the uh, surface so when you put the epoxy in if anything that squeezes out the side just with a little stick or a little cloth or something just uh, wipe it off so it's nice and smooth and if you're worried that it's still a bit lumpy you can just uh, rub a bit of sandpaper over it before you uh, put it put it back into situ so that concludes our videos on how to recloth your pool table rails. Uh, if this video has been helpful for you, could you do us a quick favour in return and be sure to hit that like button uh, before you leave us here on YouTube. And also if you could hit subscribe, it really does help us out. And for your reference, uh, on our YouTube channel you also find uh, loads of additional pool table DIY videos. So if you need help with any other part of your pool table uh, installation, please be sure to check those out. We'll have a list of them uh, below uh, in the descriptive text below this video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again.